All right. So basically, the, the premise is that Kevin Bacon has uh, been in so many different kinds of movies that everybody is very well connected to him. It turns out that he is, in fact, not the most central person, but uh, he's close. So the idea is that if a person, actor who's in a movie with Kevin Bacon, then they are going to be degree one. Then you go from this point on. So if you are an actor who are in, who's in a movie with a degree one actor, then you will be degree two. But you are not, if you are already degree one, then you are degree one, right? So degree two is anybody who's in a movie with a degree one actor and themselves are not degree one actors, right? So this goes on like this. And then most people are assumed to be, do you know what is kind of the small world that everybody is connected by how many links? Seven, right? So, um, so you know, as you add more and more, as you go about degree two, degree three, it's very difficult to find people who are above degree four. So it grows very quickly and it's massive. So, um, so what we did last time was to write a program, if you um, remember, but the code is online, that constructs two separate dictionaries. So I have one dictionary that has given actors, it has the set of movies for that actor, and then I have a second dictionary that has movies. Given a movie, it has sets of actors in that movie. So I read every single line in the file and populate these two dictionaries. And I put them in a um, function so that it was kind of easy to put it aside. All I do is create these two dictionaries and read them in. So last time what I did was I basically continued to read input until the users put in something that was not one or two and then basically printed information from this. This is incidentally what you're trying to do with homework six, right? Okay. So let's try to do the same thing, but I'm going to now try to find all the movies for an actor. So if You've entered stop. I'm going to uh, break out of the loop and my program will end. Otherwise, so um, let's call this actor. If the actor is not one of these actors that is in my movie database, I'm going to say actor not found. Else, I'm going to do the actual processing. So um, I want to find the degree of the actor. So that's what, that will take a little bit of time, and I don't want to spend the whole class doing this. But we can try to see if this actor is degree one. Okay? So. So far now in my code, I know that I did not enter stuff, and I, did, and I entered an actor that I found. And I'm going to look for if this actor is degree one. So the way that I think about you know, when I'm constructing programs like this is I'm not going to compute the degrees from one to infinity. I will try to see if I, if I can find a degree one actor. Okay? So, do we know a degree zero actor? Kevin Bacon, right? So let's try to see if we can do degree zero and degree one. Then we can think about how we can generalize this. So this is the principle of iterative programming. So you do something simple, and then from there you build to larger and larger degrees. So let's start with degree zero. So, so far I know 
the actor is in the database. So I am going to find the degree of this actor using these two dictionaries that I have. One is called actors, the other one is called movies. And then I'm going to print the degree, okay? So my function is not going to work fully for now, but I will try and see what I can do. So let's write this function. So the actor is the actor I'm looking for. So if actually actor is equal to Kevin Bacon, I'm going to return zero, right? That's easy. Otherwise, I need to find all actors who start in a movie with Kevin Bacon, right? So um, now I can write another function to do this. Maybe that's easier to do. We can try that. So, or we can do it slowly. So let's say that I have a set of all movies. And now I'm going to find all the movies for Kevin Bacon. But I do know what they are, right? Because these are are actually stored in actors of Kevin Bacon. Right? This is the set of all movies for Kevin Bacon. Okay. I don't need that. Now I want to find all actors in these movies. How can I find all actors in these movies? So, well, I am going to have a set of all actors, and I am going to look at all movies for Bacon. So for each movie that is a movie for Kevin Bacon, I can find the actors in that movie. Right, because I'm storing for each movie the set of actors. Now I can take these set of actors and I can union it with the set that I'm constructing, which is this one, this all actors. So I can take all actors. And what is the thing that unions? What's the, uh, there's plus, plus is intersection. Union is vertical bar, right? So I can do like this. So these are all actors in a movie with Kevin Bacon. Do these actors um, include Kevin Bacon? Yes, right? So what I will do is I am going to subtract from this the set that only contains Kevin Bacon. And if actor is in all actors, this is the person that I was looking for, I'm going to return one. Okay. So let's look at this function for a second. There are a few things going on in this function. The one thing that you notice is that as soon as I have a return zero here, whatever I write after this, I will never execute if I actually uh, hit that line, right? So this is kind of an important part to remember about control. So if the actor is in fact Kevin Bacon, I'm going to return zero and not execute anything below that line. So this is one of the ways I actually shorten my programs because I don't need to do if and else, right? I know that this is where it ends. Otherwise, I have computed all the movies, and then, and I did a set operation, and if the actor is in all actors, I've, I've returned one. 
Of course, I didn't have to do this. I could have just did a uh, thing where instead of constructing this set, I could have just basically checked if the actor is in this set and then return one right here. This construction allows me to actually do multiple uh, levels, so, um, so you can see this. Okay. Now, what does my function return if the person is not actually a degree one actor? So I know that in some cases I return zero, in some cases I return one, but in some cases I return Nothing, right? Which is not, right? So in fact, if I actually return nothing, that means that I actually, it is above degree one, right? So I can actually work with that for now. So I can say that if degree is equal to none, I would say degree is above one else. I am just constructing my code slowly. Okay. We can test if this is actually working. Of course, it's taking a little bit of time to read this huge database. And the first thing I test would be what? I would first test for Kevin Bacon, right? So just to make sure that it actually works for Kevin Bacon. I did not do any, um, you know, fancy uh, length name matching, so that will come in later, okay? So Kevin Bacon is zero. So Tom Hanks should be one, because he was in Apollo 13. Okay, who else is in a movie with Kevin Bacon? There is Peter Sutherland, Keeper Sutherland. All right, let's see if I can actually write this name correctly. Okay, Keeper Sutherland was in Flatliners. We are going through my, you know, uh, young years. Um, So who is not degree one? So I assume no Jennifer Lawrence, right? Ah. Um, how about a uh, old actor like Carl Malden? which I don't know how to type. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. There we go. Okay. So the last thing I will check if it actually stops. So we know that if I don't enter anything, it works. It doesn't uh, crash. If I enter stop, it stops, which is so far so good. Okay, so now, Let's try to do this above degree one, right? So, um, so now, again, I'm not going to go crazy, but I'm going to use what I found, but I'm going to now use the information that I have and do one more. So, I am, so this is what I do have is, these are actually degree one. And I will try just degree two, and then I want you to think about how you would take this and put it in a loop to compute any degree. Beware that it's going to be slow because it's going to grow larger and larger. Okay. So now I want to do degree two. So the first thing I need to do for degree two is what? Think about what the first thing you would do now if you wanted to find degree two.
Okay, so let's go back to this. Given that I know degree one actors, what is the thing that I need to do? I need to write it in English first, then I need to compute it. Okay, so I'm expecting some answers before I go on. So for degree one, what am I gonna do? So the actors that I found, yes, what's the next thing? Well, first, for the actors that I found, I need to find all the movies that they were in. Then for those movies, I need to find all the actors that were in those movies, right? So, okay, so find movies degree one actors were in. Then find actors in degree two mo movies or degree one movies actors. This is bad English. Actors, movies. And then subtract degree zero and degree. Okay, so so I'm going to use all movies. So for actor in degree one, I'm going to find the union of all the movies that they were in. Then for movie in all movies, I am going to have degree two. Okay. Then I'm going to take degree two and subtract from this degree one and the set of So if you look at this very carefully, this is kind of a repetition. This part and this part are identical, except that you start from a set. In the first, you have the set of just Kevin Bacon. In the second one, you have the set of degree one, and you will continue doing this, okay? Um, so now you can actually do the same thing, but now you have up to two. So you can actually probably do up to two. And we can try and see if actually Whoopi Goldberg was degree two. So who is in a movie with Kiefer Sutherland or, um, or Tom Hanks? Who is in a movie with Tom Hanks? Somebody with a short name. Who? Leonardo DiCaprio? That's not so short. All right. DiCaprio. <laughs> Leonardo. I don't know how it's actually spelled, so let's see. All right. Good job. Um, anybody else? Um, Liam Neeson? All right, let's see if I can type that one. Nielsen? No, Neeson. Write this. Okay. You are doing good. Anybody we can think that is definitely at least two? So who is in a movie with Tom Hanks? Meg, Meg Ryan? People you have not heard of. That is not right. So uh, that's maybe it's not in my data. Well, you know, you can, what you can do is you can cheat and then you can print degree two. The first time we do this, this is going to be uh, pretty crazy, but uh, it's okay.
So let's see who is actually. Okay, so these are people who are degree two, such as people we have never heard of. Um, all right, Sophie Morso I heard of. Okay. Now the, um, oh, you know what? I don't know why it keeps us about to, all right, so there's a bug. Um, It should work for Sophie Morso, right? Or Bruce Abbott? Okay. So I have a little bug here, but I'm going to stop here. Does compute the degree two set, but for some reason it's not printing here. I don't know. This one I'm not going to debug right now. But this is an exercise left for you. This should really work, but eventually you'll figure out. Um, so, just coming back to this. So, do you remember when we did the um, part on um, population control, where you have basically uh, oscillating between different things? So the point was that you can see that two pieces of code basically were repeating the same exact thing. So this part and this part are actually variants of the same thing. So the next step for me would be to actually take these and then convert them into something that is a single loop. But I need to figure out in the loop what kind of variables I need to keep and accumulate from one loop to the next. Okay? So I just want to show you all that you can do with a few lines of Python code. And in fact, this Python code is 83 lines, right? But it does a lot of things. So, because um, somebody was asking me about how you can do a short program, this is actually, is not really the shortest program you can write because I'm actually repeating this line of code. But even that is not really very long. So you can do a lot of different things except for the little bug, which I am sure I will find after class. But I want to stop here and then talk about something new. And this is, in fact, going to be the last big concept that we will learn in this class, which is classes. So we are going to talk about classes in this class. It's kind of meta. Um, but before I go on, do you have any questions for me about dictionaries? So basically, we started with lists, which were very, very simple. You basically throw in things, and every single item you put, it has a new index, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then we throw in dictionaries, which were much more complex, because now you can throw in values, but assign them a key that you can access them by. Um, so often you can have complex data types stored in dictionaries, and you are going to play with them in the next homework. But um, sometimes this is not enough. Sometimes you want to store data, but at the same time take that data and have some common operations applied to it. So this is kind of the last level of complication that we will learn where we are learning new and more and more interesting uh, abstractions. So the last one is going to be called classes. Okay? And from this point on, we will really not be learning anything really very groundbreaking, but we will actually be learning how to use all of these tools to solve different problems. Right? So we are not really going to go further than this. 
But this is really the last uh, big concept that we have to go through. So, what we are going to talk about is classes. So, dictionary is basically a way of structuring data, right? So, dictionaries structure data. But it doesn't tell you that if you have a dictionary of um, points, then you can also find their uh, length. For that, you have to write a function. But often, for certain types of data, you also have very common operations that instead of writing your code in one place, the functions, and the data in another place, you can put them together. So basically, a class is this uh, abstraction that has data <coughs> plus functions. But these functions are very specific because they actually apply to that specific object. So we are going to call them actually methods. Now this is actually nothing new. You have been using classes all along. A lot of the things that we use are all classes. In fact, in Python, everything is an object from a class. Some classes are a little bit more advanced or not. But you basically have been using classes in many different uh, places. So the easiest one is the string class. So given the string class, for example, you can apply a function to that class, the value that's stored in that class, which happens to be um, Kevin Bacon. And let's say you can replace E with R. It happens that this specific method actually um, adds um, it actually returns a new string, but it actually takes the value that is stored in the variable name, which happens to be a string, and applies a function to it. Okay? So um, whenever we are talking about classes, we are first going to think about a class that has some data. So we are first going to talk about the class data. Think about a little... Uh, little box, and that box, the handle, allows you to put attributes in here that belongs to the same object, okay? So you can have different attributes here. So let's try to start simple, and then we will get more fancy. So. We are going to create a new class. Let's start with the point class. So this is a new one. We are going to define a class with the variable class. And generally, the convention is that the class names start with capital. So function names are lowercase, so this way you can distinguish between the two. And you have to tell for each class which class they inherit from. For everything that we do in this class, we are going to inherit from object, which is the lowest level of class. Everything in Python is an object. An integer, a string, an image. So point duty is also going to be an object. And this class actually has nothing. So if you want to actually have an empty object, an empty function, you can just write pass. It just allows you to actually, it just always returns true, so this actually does nothing. But even this actually will do something. So let's save this. All right. 
This actually says that class, or point QD is a class that I can create instances of. So, for example, if I were to run this here, then I can create a new object, point to D. X just happens to be some new object. If you ask what type it is, it says it's a point to D object. It is one of the most boring objects in the world. It has no value, no functions, nothing useful, right? But what it is, is it's actually a little container, a bag, in which you can put things. So, so I actually have a thing called point to D. And I created one instance of it. I have a new variable, I called it X. I can actually create another one. Actually, I don't like this. Let's call this point one, okay? And I'm going to create another one called point two. So now I have two separate objects. One is called point one, and the other one is point two, okay? And again, they are extremely boring. They do nothing useful, okay? But one thing that I can do, I can actually put stuff in them. So I can actually say point one has an x value, and it is 10. And point one also has a value, which is 20. So I still cannot see what is inside point one, but since I've actually put stuff in it, I do know that point one has an x and a y value. So I actually took this object and stored in point one an x value and a y value, okay? It's almost like a dictionary, right? Except that it is uh, basically encapsulated inside a point. Whereas point two doesn't have x or y. In fact, point two will actually have, let's say, will only have z, which is kind of a crazy point. So if I were to actually do the same thing, I say point to print x and y, it says it has no attribute x, and it also has no attribute y, but it will give you the first error. So, I stored something inside point two, okay? Are you with me so far? So, so far, this is like a little, uh, you know, shopping bag I gave you that you can throw things in. But that's really not what I use objects for. Right? I want to actually use it so that every time I create a two-dimensional object, I will actually want to have a value for an x and a y. Um, in fact, a lot of people that you will talk to, have you ever talked to people and they said that they uh, think that Python is for like children or something, or that they don't like programming in Python? There's a lot of like, you know, uh, anti-Python feeling sometimes. But one of the reasons is this, because in many languages, this is not allowed. You are not allowed to create attributes on the fly. Python will allow you to do that. Some people claim that's a great feature, but generally you actually should define in advance what attributes the point should have. So the way that we are going to do that is we are going to define for this point an initialization function. Every time you create the object, it's going to call this initialization function, and that initialization function is actually going to assign values to x and y. So this way, I will guarantee that every 2D point actually has an x and a y value. So the way that I do that is define a special function called initialize in it. Now, anything that is um, special reserved words for Python starts with two underscores, like this. Remember, main equals, name equals main. So underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore was a reserved word. In the same, in the same way, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore is a reserved function. 
And it always takes a variable called whatever, you can call it whatever you want, but the convention is to call it self, which actually refers to the object itself. So basically it says that take the object itself, which I'm going to refer to as self, and then attach it to values. I'm going to say self dot x is equals y is x zero and y zero. Okay, so this is now telling me something slightly different. It is telling me that for each object, whenever you create an instance, this instance I'm going to refer to as self, so that I can attach self x and a y attribute. Okay. So in fact, if I run this again, and I create a point 2D, okay. so anytime you create a new object like this, it actually calls the initialize function. So this will call the initialize function for this object which will attach this point one, the value of x and y. So let's also do that one very slowly. This is going to get very complicated very soon, but make sure that you are following. So I am saying point one is equal to point two d. Okay. So this calls init function. such that point one becomes self, which was basically an argument, okay? Which is kind of strange, right? I didn't actually send it as an argument, but whenever you call it, the actual variable name becomes always the first argument, which is slightly confusing, but you will get used to it. So the self basically is attached to this, so that means point one will get attached an x and a y. And in this case, they will both have values zero. Okay. So now point one actually has an x and a y value. Okay. So let's go back to this again. So I have in it self. Okay. And then I call it with point one is equal to point two D. Even though it looks like there is no argument given to this, it actually, this becomes always the first argument, which is set to self. So self is now point one. So that means point one will have an X and a Y value, which are both zero. All right, okay so far? <laughs> Little confusing, but it actually becomes easy after a certain point. Well, I'm going to do a little bit more fancy. I'm also going to actually, instead of just the self, I'm actually going to send other parameters to this function. And I'm going to call this x and y. You can call them whatever you want. You can call them x0 and y0. And I am going to set self.x to x0 and self.y to y0. So now, instead of actually uh, calling initialization with no values whatsoever, 
I'm actually going to call it with these two variables. So in fact, if I do this, it is going to give me an error that's very confusing at first. It will tell me in it takes exactly three arguments. Okay, and how many have I given? Even though I have given none, this is actually the first argument, which is self, right? So, um, in fact, the way that I should call this is two values, okay? So what's going to happen now is, so now I have x0 and y0. So now this is equals x0 and y0. This doesn't work anymore, so I am going to call point 1 is point to the 10 and 20. So it goes in here, so this becomes self, the first argument. This becomes x0, this becomes y0. So as a result, now I attach point 1x, which is this, self.x, so point 1.x becomes 10, and point 2.x becomes 20. So, okay, now I messed it up. Let's do this. Now, in the same way that I was able to do before, you can actually attach other values to this variable, even though technically this is not a good exercise because you are really creating an object to do something specific. So you can also attach other things like a z value. Okay. You still have the x and the y. You just don't have, you also have other things. Okay. Now, obviously, the reason that we want to do a lot of these things is to write um, methods that make our lives easy. So, very often, you know, when I'm writing a program, you see me doing the same thing over and over. So, we had to write the same function to compute the area of a cir circle or um, parsing a line or stuff like this very, very frequently. So, as you see yourself doing the same thing over and over, you start to say, okay, I'm going to stop doing this, and I'm going to think about what is it that I keep doing all the time, right? The whole point of computer science is to reduce repetition so that I can do things very easily. So the first thing that I want to do is automate things that I do frequently, and to be able to automate those, what, are, what is the data that this information, this uh, process uses? So that should be part of my object. So if I'm doing lots of things with points, then I should basically maybe write a class for points. So if you have a two-dimensional points, and if you are using them for uh, Euclidean geometry, you may need to take two points and find distance between them. You may need to take a point and find the length of the point. You may take two points. Um, I don't know what else you do. <coughs> come up with something, but anyway, we'll find out. Um, so then that's going to be my point class. If I have, for example, points that have to do with um, actually geolocation, then the thing that I will do is find distance in terms of miles between two geolocations. And this is actually very good because I am eternally confused as to which one is latitude, which one is longitude, because I'm goofy. So I don't have to remember which one is uh, x, which one is y. If I write a function in my class, then it will be handled in my class. So once I figure it out there, I don't need to keep remembering which one was what. Okay? So this is generally the idea of classes. So let's say 
that in addition to putting some values, I'm also going to write some functions that work with those values. So if I actually have, for example, a function that finds the magnitude of uh, a point, okay, I can write a new function. And this function, again, takes as um, input self. So that means that it's going to take the object and any, well, any variables that are attached to it. And I'm going to compute something like this. So now this function actually allows me to take an object, use the values that I stored in that object, and then print it out. Now one of the things you can do is you can write testing code for anything you're writing, like a class, directly now in this function. So this is actually why if name equals main is invented. So in fact, I can create a point Maybe I create two points And I can, for example print point one dot x, point two dot x. Right. There is, if I were to actually um, take this code and import, let's see, from uh, Lecture 17, example 1, import point 2D. This is going to allow me. Okay. So I can do the same thing here. Okay. But you see, when I did this import, any of this code did not execute. Whereas when I run this, actually, this code executes, right? So this is actually generally where I write my test code. So for example, how do I test um, this function? So if I actually have um, this variable, now how am I going to call the length function? So the length function takes as input self, okay? So if I have a function that takes as input self, the only way that I can call that is, is like this. Okay. This is yet another example. Of using self because um, I had something like this. So then that means if I call point one that length, this becomes self. Now you don't have to use the name self, but this is what's commonly used, right? This would work the same. Instead of self, I would call it uh, object. This is just the name that I have given. Okay. It will work the same, but it is just convention actually to use self like this. So you don't have to just write one variable. You, can act, you don't have to write one function. You can write many functions. It turns out that there are some functions that are predefined for um, classes. So one of them is called the string function. So, questions here? We have questions? 
All right. So let me try to show you something here. Okay. So if you use the help in Python, and if you use it in Wing, it doesn't page, so I'm going to use uh, the terminal here. It will show you that it has all these different functions for integers that are called like this. So for example, the add function will take an object, like an integer object, underscore, underscore, add, and will add another object, y, but you can call this object, you call this function by simply plus as well. This is just a convention that if you define a function underscore underscore add, when you use a plus sign, it will actually call that function. And in fact, we have seen that there is a plus function also for strings, and there's a plus function for um, lists, and they all are basically using the same convention. In fact, you can have an AND function, you can have a COMPARE function, um, you can have a DIVIDE function, okay? This is one of the most important ones. You can have an STR function. This is basically says that you can take a function, you can take an object, and you can represent it as a string and return the string version of it. For integers, the string version is take the value converted to an integer, but the string representation exists for any type of object in Python. So for example, whenever you have a value, let's say one and two, you can return the string version of that you can have a um, set and you can have a string version of that. So every object actually has a string version. In fact, that's really what happens when you uh, save it to a file, you save the string per version. So in the same way, you can create the string version of your own object. So let's create one for our object. Now, to understand that it's one of those functions that it knows, I am going to create one called underscore underscore str. And this function has to return a string, right? That's the only way it works. So it's going to return a string. And I'm going to actually represent it as, let's do it as point D, just to be easy. And this can get as sophisticated as you want. So if I want to see This is now the string version of my point. And if I want it to be a little nicer, I can put a space right here, right? So now I am able to actually find the string representation of any object. In fact, if you just say print point one, what it will do is it will take point one, it will take the string representation of it, and then it will print that. So you will in fact see this nice representation which basically calls the string function which then prints it out, okay? Again, this is the Python inside uh, thing. Um, so what else you can do? For example, you can write a function to add two points. Now this is gonna be a little bit complicated because in the same way that I had um, x plus two, right? When I'm adding two points, one of the points is itself, right? So point itself is one of the points, but I'm also going to take a second point, so I'm going to add a new variable, other, okay? But now this time I'm actually thinking that self and other are both points. 
So at this point, you have to make a decision whether you are going to actually um, change the value of self or you are going to return a new object, which is this ad the addition of self and other. Right? So one way you can do that, you can say self.x is equal to other than x, self.y is equal to other plus other y. Okay, so this add function changes self but does not return anything. Right, so if I were to actually um, call this add function, so So let's create two points. So now I can actually do this. And now I can print point one. And in fact, it will be 40 and 60. So, um, but I don't actually like this because, in fact, the convention generally is that all of these functions, add, like, plus, concatenation, always returns a new object, right? When you concatenate two lists, it actually returns a new list, right? It's one of those things we know is a shallow copy. When you add two strings, it returns a new list. It returns a new string. So the plus actually always works by creating a new object. So so let's put a thing here that says, don't like this one. You should not change self, but return a new object, OK? So I'm going to change that in a second. But you don't have to do this for every single one. For example, we can create a, a new variable, a new uh, method called distance. It will take a point self and another point other, and it will compute the Euclidean distance between self and other. So it's going to compute something like, for example, Clearly, you can do this in a single step, but uh, this is my starting point. Okay. So I can create point one, point two, and then I can find point one distance from point two, and it is 28.28, and that should in fact be the same exact thing of point one distance point two, because there is no difference, okay? So this function works fine because I can just add new methods to it, and it just returns something new. I just don't like the, um, the add function, because I don't want to actually change the value, I want to add, I want to create a new object. So, if so, I can create a new object inside the function. So let's call that new. And I'm going to create this new object with the values of self.x and self.y. And then, And I'm going to add the other values to this new object. Then I'm going to return the new object. And I guess new is not a uh, key keyword, so that's OK. okay. So I want the add to work in such a way that instead of really changing any of the values that it works on, it actually gives you a totally new point. First, make sure that this works. It actually has been a few. Uh, months since I've written any classes, so first let's make sure that this is actually correct. Okay, so let's try. <coughs> so
So point three is actually the addition of this, whereas point one, point two are unchanged. Right? So now when I call the add function, it actually returns a new point with these two values. Now you see that as I do these things, I don't have to rewrite the printing function, right? I don't have to rewrite the way to print points. I basically just print it, and the method that I used for printing, the string method, works for any object of this type. I don't have to worry about defining distance. It is defined for any object, and the length is defined for any object, so every single object has the same exact methods that I have defined for this function. And in fact, as I promised you, since now I define this underscore underscore add, it actually will also work if I just write plus, right? And if you want to see what the result of this is, this is what you can do. So now I can have a function that I can call one of two ways, by the underscore notation or by just plus. If I want, I can also define one for subtracting, which we need to remind ourselves. Um, it's called subtract, right? So you can define a subtract method. In the same way add returns a new object, I'm actually going to also create a new object for subtract. But this time I'm going to subtract the values. This does not work. Alright, there we go. Okay. So let's try point one, point two. So now I can print point one plus point two plus point one minus point two. Okay. So this kind of gives you the basics. I don't know if this is enough to finish all the lab assignments because the next lab is going to be on classes, but the next homework is actually going to be on dictionaries. So the next homework is going to be hopefully a little less complex than this homework. And um, so we will continue covering this on Monday. Anything that we need that we didn't cover, we will cover it then, but you can get started with the lab as well.